What are we talking about today? We're talking about the news. Remember, you get to see what's happening in America through the prism, through the, the, the focal point, through the glasses, right, from the perspective of CNN. And CNN and New York Times and Los Angeles Times and all those places don't give you a real picture of what's happening in America. They give you a left-wing view of what's happening in America. In fact, they don't tell you the news at all. They tell you their conclusions. So rather than hearing the raw facts, the actual facts of what's happening, you're hearing their perspective or their interpretation of what those facts mean. That's not news coverage. And it's not responsible. And certainly it doesn't give you a real view of what's happening. So how do you get a real view of what's happening? Well, (laughs) you listen to me. I'll tell you. I'll tell you what's really happening. So rather than forming your conclusions about who Donald Trump is as President of the United States, whether he's an evil guy, whether he's stupid, whether he's mean, all of the, whether he's a tyrant, whether the, rather than forming those conclusions about Donald Trump after reading or listening to the news in Korea, don't do that. Right? Instead, listen to me, and I'll tell you exactly who he is and exactly what's going on And what I tell you will not be based upon political science theory. There's a place for political science theory, and we've discussed that in the past, and we'll discuss it in the future. But when it comes to Donald Trump, it's not political science theory. It's human behavior. And we're going to discuss the aspects of human behavior that the left wing is trying to use against him. So I'm launching here. Um, series of eight videos. Eight videos should be enough. In those eight videos, I'm going to discuss different aspects of Donald Trump, his personality, his reputation, and why he is actually an excellent president for the United States and for Korea. Not president of Korea, but as president of the United States, he's good for Korea. Just as the United States and Korea have had a great relationship since the Korean War, we have a great relationship now, if you will let it happen by giving the President of the United States credit for who he is, which is a a really good man, and having all the best interests of the United States, which means the best interests of Koreans in mind. There's a reason for that. While Donald Trump is not looking to find out what's best for Koreans, he's looking out to find out what's in the best interest of Americans and what's in the best interest of Americans happens also to be in the best interest of Koreans. And so that's what we're going to learn over this series of eight videos. So in this series of eight videos, we'll talk about the allegations that came against Donald Trump when he first became a candidate. Sexual allegations, that he was a a monster, a sexual predator, and that he was a sexually assaultive, even a sexual batterer of women, uh, something short of rape, but uh, still criminal in his behavior, or immoral. Uh, He's not. He's none of those things. But he speaks candidly as a man, and so sometimes um, men say things in private that they don't expect the rest of the world to hear, and, well, it results in some bad things. Let me give you an example. I teach in police administration, and so several of my friends outside of the university are police officers. And one police officer, um, a veteran of 18 years, invited me to a dinner, and I had dinner with him and some of his friends. And some of his friends were also 18, 20-year veterans of the police department, and some of them were very high-ranking. And so we had dinner, and then we had what they call second round, which means we go to a norebang, or a singing room, where there's singing going on, but singing is kind of the secondary purpose of the second round. We don't actually go for singing, because nobody there has a decent voice, so (laughs) it's kind of a waste of time if you go there for singing. What we go there for is because there's women, and the women are lined up at the front of the room in the norebang, and the men get to choose. I want that one. I want that one. I want that one. Right? Choose which woman you want to come sit next to you. And the women are gorgeous. 
They're dressed in a very sexy fashion and for um, the right amount of money, you can do things to these women, right? So one of the police officers, as soon as we walked into that room, immediately pulled out of his pocket a wad of cash, all kinds of $10 bills and $50 bills or man Juan and oh man Juan bills, and he put them on the table so all the women would look at that immediately and say, oh, I want to be with that man because he's got the money. Because the money is what inspires the women to expose themselves to that man so they can show their breasts and allow the man to fondle her or go into round three, which doesn't involve a Norde Bong or singing room. It doesn't involve a restaurant. It doesn't involve a bar. It involves a motel room. That's what happens behind the scenes. That's what you wives, you women, don't know that your husbands, your boyfriends, the men in your life are doing. Right? Well, Donald Trump spoke as a man in a situation that he considered to be only between men, just like these police officers who did such things that I wanted to call the police and report these guys and get them arrested, except they were the police. And they weren't about to arrest themselves. I escaped. I didn't stick around for round three. I left them. I went home. Very disappointed. But that's um, cultural practice. It's common practice here in Korea. And so it happens all of the time. So when a husband comes home late at night and the wife says, where were you? Oh, I had an office at dinner. Well, maybe. And if he says, if we went to a Nore Bong, well, that's that's... Very possible. But it's not the same Nore Bong or the same activities in the Nore Bong that happen when they go as a couple. When their wives are not there, Korean men act like single men. And they do things that single men do, right? It's not a good thing. Okay, so Donald Trump got involved with some sexual allegations. Not that he was ever a, a criminal but that he might have said or done some things when he was with other men that good men wouldn't say. And it's coming back to bite him, or it, it came back to bite him during the uh, election cycle in 2016. Other allegations against him have to do with racism, which is totally absurd. <laughs> he has hired so many hundreds and thousands of people of different races, black, Hispanic, uh, Asian, everything in between over his many years in business that clearly he has no racist bone in his body. And charges of anti-Semitism, which means he hates Jews. <laughs> well, that would mean that he hates his son-in-law and daughter and his grandchildren because they are Jews. Well, obviously that's not the case. So allegations of racism, we'll talk more about those in detail. Some people allege that he is a tyrant or an authoritarian, which means that he rules the country with an iron fist, iron steel, steel, iron, very powerful, very strong, heavy, right? If you get hit with iron, it hurts a lot. And a fist showing that it's control. It's not negotiation, it's control, right? Iron fist. So people say that he's ruling the United States with an iron fist. He's a tyrant. He's an authoritarian, which nothing can be farther from the truth. As we can see, particularly during this time with the China virus, the coronavirus, um, he's been more concerned with what we call federalism, which means allowing the governors of states to control their own territory and their own people. So rather than being authoritarian and tyrant, he's allowed governors to make the final decisions with regard to making people wear masks or stay indoors, closing down certain businesses, right? When to open up and allow children to go back to school. In other words, the authoritarian is not authoritarian when it comes to ruling the country. He allows people to rule the country themselves, and then he steps in when need is there, like when there is, in response to coronavirus, a need for more respirators to help patients breathe better so, they, so that they don't die. Right? 
There was a demand upon the federal government that the government provide respirators, and there were none in the, the, the warehouses of the federal government because Barack Obama had used all of the medical supplies in America and failed to replace them. Right? He was an idiot. He was really, really stupid. Barack Obama destroyed America's stockpile of medical supplies. So there were no respirators. Donald Trump fortunately came along and with his um, very acute, very uh, detailed knowledge of business, was able to get businesses to step in and change from building cars into building respirators. There was never a patient anywhere in the United States that needed a respirator that did not get one. Because Donald Trump, within a month, turned our stockpile, which was zero, into such a huge stockpile of respirators and other medical supplies, including masks, that nobody was ever in need of something without being able to get it. He supplied whole hospitals to different states. Those hospitals and those hospital ships were never even used by those states. The state governors would cry out and they'd complain that Donald Trump was not doing anything to help, and yet they had to turn around and say, okay, he helped so much that we can't use it. <laughs> Donald Trump was not authoritarian, he wasn't a tyrant, and he really did provide more than they could possibly use. All right. Some people say that Donald Trump destroyed the economy in the United States. As if to say that Donald Trump is responsible for COVID-19, for the China virus, the China coronavirus, right? the Wuhan virus, the China virus. That's the point. It's because it came from China. That's why we have the virus, not just in the United States, but throughout the world. And so in all the world, the virus had, um, had become so extreme within a month or two that the economies of every industrialized country in the world were shut down. People were locked down. People had to stay in their houses. In China, they actually welded the doors shut. <clears throat> so people could not leave their houses. The rest of the world pretty much allowed people to leave their houses to go buy food supplies so they can continue, continue to eat and survive. But basically, the economy shut down. Businesses, stores, restaurants, everything shut down. Nothing was moving. That wasn't Donald Trump's fault. He was a victim just as much as everybody else. So the economy of the United States it did suffer. It had been growing at such a rapid pace that it was getting stronger and stronger and stronger, and unemployment was getting lower and lower and lower, down to 3.5%. 3.5%. There's no country in the world that has 3.5% unemployment. The United States had it. And we had that low of unemployment, not just for whites, but for blacks and Hispanics, for the rich and for the poor, right? When the economy was going strong, people were making more money than ever before because the, their salaries were worth more. They were getting raises. The minimum wage was not raised by the federal government, but their wages were increased because the economy was strong and employers were sharing that with their workers. And the people that were making the most increases in their salaries were, were the lower class, not the high class. The rich weren't benefiting the most from Trump's policies. The poor were benefiting the most. Interesting. All right. Uh, collusion with Russia, of course. And Donald Trump had to suffer three years of investigations and charges and allegations that he had worked with Russia in order to steal the campaign or steal the election in 2016, 2016 election. And after three and a half years of investigation, the only thing that we learned is that the Trump campaign didn't work with Russia to steal the election. The left-wing liberals worked with Russia to steal the election, right? And they did it a lot, right? Another video, I used the word projection, so projection is like when you have a movie projector in the old days, you shine a light through a film and it projects what's on that film to a wall over here so you can watch the movie over here. It's projection. Projection is causing what's 
what's in your mind to be in somebody else's behavior projection. And so in psychology, people say that we project um, pain to other people. We assume that other people are feeling pain because that's what we would feel if we were in that situation. Well, the left wing has a problem with projection. When they're doing something wrong, like colluding with Russia, they'll accuse the other guy, in this case, Donald Trump, of colluding with Russia. Obviously, Trump did not collude with Russia or anybody else. And we'll talk more about that as well. The only ones that did collude with Russia would be Hillary Clinton and her criminal gang. Right? Hillary Clinton, Clinton and Barack Obama are really evil evil. You get the impression that they're great because that's what CNN tells you. But the reality is they talk a good show. In other words, they they appear to be dignified and nice and saying all the right things, but they're really bad deal. Self-dealing is an ex- example of this. Donald Trump has been accused of getting rich off the presidency. You would think someone becomes president, they have opportunities for different business deals, they can get rich. And in fact, one president took their net worth, that means after taxes and after expenses, the value of all of the things that they, that they own, right? Their net worth. One president took it from here all the way up here. In other words, increased net worth 30 times. 30, not one time, that would be a 100% increase. If he increased it two times, that would be a... 200% increase. This president increased his net worth 30 times, right? So hundreds of times, um, uh, or hundreds of percents uh, increase. That president was Barack Obama. Increased his net worth 30 times. It's, you never knew that, did you? He got rich off of his presidency. Well, now he's living in a $10, $15 million house on an island that basically he owns off the coast of, well, I think it's Massachusetts. President Trump's net worth has been cut in half because he gives away his money. He has a salary coming in of thousands of dollars uh, per month, right? And he gives it away. He gives it away. He is president for free. He doesn't charge anything. He doesn't take a normal statutory salary. They give it to him, but he takes that money and immediately gives it to a charity or an organization or an individual that needs it. His net worth has been cut in half. He's not self-dealing. If anything, he's the most honest president of all. After three and a half years with the Mueller investigation and other investigations, looking for anything they can find to try to destroy President Trump, they've found nothing. Turns out he's more honest than you and me. He's a good man. All right, self-dealing. Obviously, he didn't cause the China coronavirus. Failed to respond to the virus, and we talked about that. We'll talk about that more. Oh, a threat. If, he, if uh, Joe Biden is elected president, some people say that President Trump will not leave office. In fact, he'll get the military to control the American popu- uh, population so he can remain president for, um, well, indefinitely. Kind of like President Bach here, did here, the first President Bach in, uh, in Korea until he was assassinated. Um, he took uh, the presidency by force and he kept it. Well, the reason why that, that does not apply to Donald Trump is because, number one, he doesn't want to do that. Turns out he obeys the Constitution. He's consistent with the Constitution, <laughs> excuse me, more than any of his existing opponents or any of the pre- previous presidents. In addition to that, many people hate him. Anybody, anybody that is in Democratic Party or left-wing politics will not follow Donald Trump. And that includes probably half of the generals that lead our military. So if Donald Trump tells the military to do something as commander-in-chief, there is a chance that the military will not follow him. They swear an oath, they swear an oath, 
to defend and protect the Constitution. And if they get an order from the president that they consider to be not constitutional, they will not follow him. They've made that very clear already. He's not a threat of military coup in the United States. He'll follow the constitutional mandates just like he always has, and he will in the future. Finally, many people say that Donald Trump has destroyed international military alliances and trade agreements. Right? Well, look closely at each one of those things. The military alliances such as the United States has with Korea, such as the United States has with Europe through the organization called NATO, North Atlantic Treaty Organization, and other organizations. The only thing that Donald Trump has done is tell people, oh, you know what, you're grown up now, you're adults, you can take care of yourself. Pay your own bills. We're not going to pay them for you. Pay your own bills. It's time for you to take care of yourself. Not to take care of us. He doesn't want the rest of the world to pay America's bills, even though America's been paying the rest of the world's bills for, well, 70 years. <laughs> he just wants the rest of the world to take care of their own bills. I mean, so when it comes to alliances, he's made demands, for instance, that Germany and Italy and um, United Kingdom... Um, and France, everybody pay their own way. They pay their own obligation of 2% towards the NATO budget. Most countries have never done that. A couple have. Most have never done that. They've relied always on the United States putting more money into the pot. <laughs> Donald Trump says, no more. We're not going to do that anymore. If this organization is not good for us, we're not going to uh, support it, not going to keep it going. And, yeah, Donald Trump has said that with regard to Korea as well. It's because he wants there to be a fair relationship, an equal relationship. This isn't something that Donald Trump is doing in order to denigrate or hurt or lower the status of America's partners. In fact, it's raising up the status of all the partners, saying... You're no longer be no, below us. You're equal to us. You're equal. Therefore, you handle your part, we'll handle our part. Right? 50-50. Equity. Equality. It's a good thing. It's a respectful thing. Shows respect for military alliance. Right? Also in trade. If we have two countries, China and the United States, and China is getting more benefits than the United States in the trade agreement, right? In other words, they're able to sell more things in the United States, but they don't want to buy American products. We call that a trade imbalance. It's not balanced. We want balance. Donald Trump says, you buy more, and then we'll call it even. We will be fair. We will be equal trading partners. Once again, he's not seeking something that is unreasonable on behalf of the United States. He's seeking equity, equality. That's all. That's all. Not a bad thing. We're going to look at each one of the items that we just talked about. We're going to look at them in more detail, probably two items at a time, over the next eight videos. Well, the next seven. This is the first of eight. Right. At the end, you'll understand that Donald Trump not only is not such a bad guy, he's a good president. He's an American president. He's not president of Europe. He's not uh, president of the European Union or Germany or England or anywhere else. He's not president of Korea. He's president of the United States of America. That's it. And he's a good one. And as president of the United States of America... He's there to support and defend all of America's friends and allies, and he will continue to do that in a fair way. Okay, that's what's ahead. All right, that's enough. That's enough for tonight. It's already gone 28 minutes, which is longer than I expected. So next video will be a little bit shorter. We'll cover two of those items, and I'll see you soon. Have a great day.